In this video, we will see how we can use the Solver tool in Excel and solve a linear programming problem. We can see that here I simplified my problem, the given problem, this is the given problem, in the Excel sheet. And it's a kind of template for myself. And I can modify it in case that I have more number of variables or less number of variables and also the number of constraints are not the same. It means I can add or delete some columns. If I have five decision variables, then I click on this last column and insert a new one. If I do this, then I can copy this rule here and I have the name for the next variable. And the same thing in this part. I do this. Now I have this is also original the zero. In case that we have nothing in a cell, Excel considers the value of that cell as zero. And when we start to solve the problem, all the variables start from zero for now. Or if I don't need a column, then just I click on that the name of that column and then delete that one. So I designed this in a way that if you want to add or remove a constraint also, the same thing happens. To the left, I have the simplified form of this problem. And to the right, these are some rules and formulas that we need to write the rules, formulas, and use all these numbers, and then use the solver. We know that these are coming from objective function, this one, which are called objective coefficients. These three are coming from right-hand side. This RHS also means right-hand side values. And the other coefficients for the constraints are called technological coefficients. Now, uh, as I said, I can add a new row here. Or if I don't need, I can delete that row. If I add a row, I need to do some changes also here. If I have the same type of constraints, as less than or equal to, then I copy this two down. However, I don't need to have the same value. And here also the same thing, because I have a rule here. I will explain how to write it. So I can copy this rule that inequality and another rule is here for this eight here. Right now you can see that it is zero. If I scroll down, you have here I have zero and zero. What is that zero? This zero is equal to seven, whatever you have the original problem. If I write, for example, 15, that one also changes to 15. They are exactly the same. And this zero here means if I multiply these coefficients by the variables, right now we have 0, 3.33, 0, 0 values for the decision variables. For example, here I put 3, and there are the others which has no value as zeros, then it's going to be 10. And it seems that it still satisfies the constraint. Now, I don't need this extra row. I don't have that one. This many rows and columns. Now, I put this problem here, and we only look at the left part. And we start from scratch to bring those coefficients from the given problem here. Now, you have this template. Looking at the problem, we have maximization problem. Then here we write max. If it is minimization, we change this one to min. This objective means in the first row, our objective or our goal is to maximize this function, which is a linear function. What are the coefficients for x1 up to x4? For the x1, I need just type this number, minus 5, and then x2, we have coefficient 4. For x3, minus 6. And for x4, minus 8. That's all. This is for objective. Now we go to the constraints, this part. First constraint is 1x1, 7x2, 3x3, 7x4, and right hand side is 46. Second constraint, I read 3x1, minus 2x2. If I want to read, I should read like this, minus 2x2. For this x3, I need to multiply it by 1. If I don't have x3 in that row, I should write 0. And then 2x4, right-hand side, 8. And finally, the last inequality or constraint, we have 2x1, 
3x2 minus 1x3 and 1x4 and right hand side 10. Now that's all we are done with importing the data to the tableau form of our problem. It looks like a simplex tableau, however it's not exactly the simplex tableau. In the simplex tableau we need to go forward one more step, change this inequalities or to equalities by adding or subtracting slack variables or surplus variables. Now, we consider these cells to keep the value of decision variables. If we write these names on top of them, then Excel will consider this x1 as name of that variable. So this is the way that we keep our variables. For now, there's no value for them. Excel will consider that zero. Now, we go to the right hand side. You can see some zeros here. So this 46, 8, 10, they came by rule that I said this one equal to that, that I don't need to type anymore. But in this orange parts, we need to write some rules or formula. Doing the same thing that we have in the left part. For objective is minus 5x1, 4x2, this minus 6x3, minus 8x4. We need to multiply them and finally add them up. So we have a rule for this basic formula that is going to be sum of products. And the name of the rule is sum product. So in this cell, I write just equal, which is a formula, and some product, it appears, you can double click on it. Now we need two arrays to be multiplied. The first array is the cost coefficients, this minus five, four, minus six, eight, I select this one. And then we separate the arguments. You can see here in your Excel, you may see instead of this comma, you may see semicolon, but for me it is comma. And the other one is the variables. Uh, these are the variables. That's all. We don't need to do anything because we don't want to use this formula anywhere else. That's all. Now, for example, if I give some value for x, if I give, for example, x2 to, to be 3, so the others are zeros. So this 3 times 4 should give us 12. That one becomes 12. But originally, for now, it is 0 or nothing in it. Now, what do we have in constraints? We should multiply these coefficients by xi's of the value of xi's. So value of xi's are saved in these cells. So I need to multiply this array by that array and write it here. That's all we write equal against some product. This array, the first one, and separator of the arguments here, comma, and the second one, the variables. If I press enter, it will work for this cell, but I cannot copy for the others, because if I want to copy a rule for the others, row numbers will change, because I want to use the second row and then third row. But I want to move down, because xi's are in a fixed position. Then to lock the cells, we know that we can put dollar sign for the column or row. Well, in this case, we lock both. But at once, we can press F4, and you can see those dollar signs. It shows that we lock the cells. Now I stay at this right bottom corner of this. I can see this plus sign, and then copy this rule for the others. Now, I want to see whether, whether I did the rule correctly or not. I can select this cell and go to the formula and trace the precedence. It shows that computing this cell, I use this array and this array. Correctly done. So these are the coefficients for the third constraint and these are the variables. Correctly. And if you see this array moving down, you are not going to get the correct answer. So better to check your work, whether you are choosing or you are bringing the data from correct place or not. Now, I remove that again. I go formula and remove these arrows. Now we are ready to use the solver. If you go to the data menu and you don't see the solver at the end of this menu, 
should go to the option. Right now, I will remove and bring it back one more time. So once I remove it, just, okay. Now, if I go to the data, we don't see that solver there. So if it is not there, if you bring it once, then it will remain there. So file, options, go to the add-ins, here, click on go. And we need the solver add-in, but add the others, we may need in the sensitivity analysis or other things that we want to continue, okay? Now, if I go to data menu, this time I see the solver there. Now, I click on Solver, but before clicking on Solver, better to select this cell because we, our objective is maximizing Z value. And this is the value of Z saved in J2. Even if you didn't select that, you can change it later, but better to click here and then start to solve your problem. Now, I go to the Solver. Since I solved once, you can see the rules here. And if you have this file and run it or open the file, you will see these things. If you go to the solver and click, you will see all this information. But for now, I reset all and start from scratch again. So where, what is my objective? My objective is maximizing this value. So objective is, this is the set objective, my set objective to this cell, J2. Do I want to maximize, minimize, or just solve a system of equations or inequalities? I want to maximize. Maximize this cell. Where are your changing variables or decision variables? So I click here and select the cells as decision variables. Done. We need just to add the constraints. But since our constraints are all of the same type, all less than or equal to, I can add them at once. If they are different, we need to add them one by one. Now I add the constraints. I want to have all these left-hand sides. Here you can change the type, less than or equal to, greater than, equal, it should be integer, binary, or whatever. We have less than or equal to, and what's right-hand side? This column. You know that if this vector is less than the other one, the corresponding elements must be, must satisfy the same inequality. Now we are done with the inequalities, okay. Now you see here, we maximizing this cell by the decision variables mentioned here and the constraints, this column less than the other one. We have something to select here if all the con decision variables are non-negative. Here you can have this tick sign by default that you have non-negativity constraints. If you don't have, then you should remove them those are non-negative, you should write here, for example, here I add x1 greater than or equal to, for example, 0. Okay. So, I have one more inequality here, x1 greater than 0. But for now, since all of them are greater than zero, they I don't need. For example, I may have x1 greater than zero, x2 greater than two, whatever I can add in this place also without considering as another constraint. So I delete this one. I have only this previously mentioned constraints. Another thing, since this is linear programming, you have three options here and you need, you want to solve by solver as a simplex method. Now, if you click on solve, you will see the final answer here. You will find the Z value, best value, the max value for Z here, which happens when we are in this corner point for the XIs, the values for XIs. And by those values, the constraints are going to be of this type. We will check them. So now I press on solve and we are done. Now, we can see that the best solution for decision variables are 0, 3.3300. 0, 0. And the maximum value for Z is 13.33. Looking at the constraint, we can see that they are all satisfied. The first one less than or equal to that. Second one the same. The third one is a specific one. We can see that this, these two are exactly equal. 
And you know that we call these things, or well, this type of inequalities, binding inequality. If left hand side is exactly right hand side, or we use all the source of type three. So later we are going to use this sensitivity report, limit report, and answer report to study the sensitivity analysis in the other video. So we just click on OK. If we want to solve by a solver, we are done.